Hey Geeks, Tim Tibbetts here with MajorGeeks.com and today we're going to take a quick look at PZIP. It was actually originally a file archiver. You could uh, unzip zip files, RAR files, all the popular formats, as well as compress. Over the years, this open source program has actually gone into more of a file manager. So we're just going to look at the basics today or we'll be here for an hour. And if you're looking to open a file or convert zip to RAR 7Z or whatever you want, you can do it here. So we're going to start by showing you the basic program, which is sitting right here. As you can see, it, it's doing so much more. You have your whole access to your complete file system, so you can do whatever you want as far as file managing goes. Uh, it, it incorporates into your context menu, meaning your right click. So as you can see, as a file manager goes, you can add these, convert them, extract. Uh, if you want to do any kind of navigation, it's actually pretty complicated as a file manager goes. It really went uh, very, very far in depth. Um, don't forget also you can delete, which is nice if you were putting some files together and you wanted to send them the email and then completely securely delete them for privacy, you have that option right down to uh, securely deleting any free space. So again, this is um, just to get it out of the way a little bit, it's a little more than we need to worry about now, but just to show you some of the file manager things you can do. I think programs like, I think Greg mentioned in the comments, file manager and stuff like that, there's a lot of file managers out there that replace your Windows Explorer. And this is probably not one of the better file managers, but it's certainly one of the great open source, completely free programs to open zips, for example. Here's their actual portable version. It's in a zip. So I can double click it and let pzip open it up and see what's in it. Or I can use it through the context menu and right click, head to pzip. I can extract it, extract it right where I'm at, pick a folder, uh, and obviously part of your conversion, some of your basic stuff that you would do here. So we'll just do a quick extract here and give her a second. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty fast. So now it's sitting right here. And now I could actually run the pzip portable right out of the folder there. So now for another example, let's say you wanted to send some stuff out. Here is a folder I set aside with a bunch of screenshots of our programs. I think it's only about 16 megs, 260 files. So that's a lot of files. So now I can take this, I can right click on this, and I can use my pzip to add it to anything I want. Zip is the most common. That's what most people be using. But if you went to archive, you could choose zip, zipx, rar, 7z, dmg for mac, ace, cab, tar, iso, I don't even know, it might even support more by now. So here we go, so let's just add it to an archive, let's say zip, which is most the most popular. Let's say I wanted to email this to somebody, so now here it is right here. Let's take a look at the size, 14 megs versus 16 megs. So it compressed it down to, so you might want to on something like this, go to the add to the archive. And once this thing pops up, you see you have a ton of options here. So somewhere down in this, you have your compression options. So you can go to ultra fastest, which is, or fast, which is where you're at, because most people are about speed on this, and decide just how much you want to compress it. You could also password protect it. You could split it so it fits on a disk. I mean, they really covered a lot of stuff here. If you if you really want to play around, it's an excellent program for that. So um, let's see, make sure you keep some programs too. Boom. So we'll run it again, see where we get. Again, the problem here is that the it's a folder full of JPEGs that are already pretty compressed. So how much compression you're going to get is really going to vary by what it is you're compressing. And you see, it wasn't too bad considering it went for the ultra mode. So and it didn't change much. That's because everything in there is compressed. I don't think you could squeeze it much more than that. Very, very little. So a lot of times you're you're good with your default stuff. So if everything's closed, once again, you could just double click to open an archive and, and manage it from there. You could open the archive and read the text files that are inside it, close it, or use your context menu and do what you need to do. Once again, we're heading up onto the five minute mark. So we're probably farther than I wanted to be on this now. So I, I, I kind of skimmed some of the file manager stuff. So as you can see, it's it's really quite the file manager when push comes to shove. So uh, download's free, it's open source, no spyware, no malware. Give it a shot. 
let us know what you think about it in the comments. We'd like to hear from you, and we will see you next time.